what's good, Bills Mafia, Rev here, and you are now tuned in to episode 10 of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. If by any chance you are not connected to the Buffalo Fanatics Network, do me this favor, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all things Buffalo Bills. And don't forget to turn the bell notifications on. All right, now let's dig in. Yo, Bills Mafia, what is good? Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of Rated Rev, brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. Guys, I am so incredibly excited to be here with you all again for another edition of Rated Rev. I don't know, but man, if if I wish that I could just give you all a great big bear hug. That's how I'm feeling right now. I mean, I mean, for real. Like I, I'm 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 a hugger. Okay, just gonna let you guys know I'm an emotional guy and I'm a hugger. And I, I wish that I could just give you all a big hug. That's how much I, I love you all, man. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I absolutely love the Bills Mafia. And I count it a blessing, a blessing, an absolute blessing to be able to be connected with fellow Bills fans around the country and around the globe. And thank God that I'm able to do this via Buffalo Fanatics connecting us all together man this is a blessing and i don't take it for granted i hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your work week i know this is monday but come on now look we can't let monday or any other day control us or tell us how we're supposed to act or how 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 we're supposed to feel we need to take control over this day and every single day and rejoice in the fact that you are alive right now to see another beautiful day And another beautiful day it is when we get to talk about the Buffalo Bills, baby. The sun is shining. Summer is on the horizon. The Bills are going to win a Super Bowl. (laughs) Yes, sir. You know I had to throw that in there. But no, I I believe that. The Bills are about to win a Super Bowl really close. Could this be the year? I don't know. Could this be the year? I'm feeling it, man. I'm feeling it. I hope you guys are feeling it, too. You guys need to get charged up. You guys need to get pumped up, amped up. This is Monday, and we're talking about the Bills, who are going to win the Super Bowl. Bank it. Put it in the bank. It's a wrap. You feel me? But we got to trust the process. We got to trust the process. And right now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that process as we approach the 2022 NFL season for the beloved Buffalo Bills. You know, can you do me a favor? Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go back to last year. The start of last year. The Buffalo Bills were fresh off of an AFC championship match with the Kansas City Chiefs. And going into 2021, last year, expectations were through the roof. Bills fans, we had expectations, high expectations for the Bills. And no doubt the team had high expectations for themselves. We expected the Bills to make it to the Super Bowl. After what they did and they got to the AFC Championship, I know a lot of us didn't expect it to happen, but they did. And then so last year we expected them to go even further. And we know what happened, right? We know what happened. The Bills experienced some adversity Early on in the season. But through that adversity, they finally were able to find their way throughout the season. And when things were looking bleak, you know, I know myself, there was times within the season when I'm like, you know what? Chalk it up. The Bills are done. The Bills are done. There's no need to talk about Super Bowl caliber. I'm talking about, I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs. You guys don't know what I'm talking about, right? That stretch of the season where we're like, oh my gosh, are they going to make the playoffs? But needless to say, what I love about this team, and I'm so glad that Sean McDermott is coaching him, is that they have the attitude, the demeanor of champions. They don't quit. They don't give up. They they, they are tenacious. This team is resilient, and they fought through the adversity that they faced early in the season. 
They got back on track, won the division, entered into the playoffs, beat the breaks out the Patriots, had a rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs in the division around the playoffs, and had one of the be- one of the best playoff performances, playoff games in NFL history. Now, granted, last year did not go the way we all wanted it to, right? But even though last year didn't go as we planned and as we expected, what I love about it is that it gave us as fans, it gave us the chance to finally see our players put on a show. And boy, did they put on a show throughout the season, but especially in the playoffs, the big dogs came to play and they put on an absolute clinic. Some of the players had breakout seasons and others had breakout performances in big time moments. Absolutely. Hands down. No doubt about it. Big time performances in big time moments. Guys like Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, arguably one of, if not the best safety tandems in the NFL today. Both. Mind you, having stellar seasons last year that earned them all pro honors. Finally getting the national recognition that they deserved. We as Bills fans, we already knew that they were great. We already knew that they were great. But they finally got the national recognition and honors that they deserved by getting the all pro nods, both of them. Granted, they were snubbed in the Pro Bowl, but they made up for it by getting all pro pro nah, first team and second team respectively then you had guys like Dawson Knox Dawson Knox who myself included along with many others were ready to write him off can you believe that I mean yeah hindsight is 2020 right but man I was ready to write Dawson Knox off and replace him you guys know it very well and don't look at me like that as if you never thought that as if, as if you never, for one chance, wanted him to be replaced. And with all the, 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 the trade talks of, of Zach Ertz coming to Buffalo. Remember that? Yeah. Don't act like I'm by myself. You wanted Zach Ertz to be a Buffalo Bill too. Come on now. Yeah, I'm not by myself. Right? But needless to say, Dawson Knox flipped the switch. And I'm so glad. I'm, let me say this. I'm so glad that, that I'm not the GM. Right, that Brandon Bean knows what he's doing, right? That Sean McDermott knows what he's doing, and they just trusted the process. They trusted these guys that they have developed. And boy, I tell you, Dawson Knox flipped the switch. He flipped the switch last year and had a breakout year. You talk about breakout years, you put Dawson Knox's face right next to that, right? He had a breakout year last year that put him in the national spotlight. We all know that he came back from tight end university, right, in the the offseason, and he came back with a vengeance. National spotlight last year, breakout season, ended his third season with the Buffalo Bills with 49 receptions, 587 yards, plus a career-best nine touchdowns. A feat that, get this, ranked him tied for second place amongst NFL tight ends last year. Dawson Knox had a breakout season. Breakout season. Then we got my man Gabe Davis. Gabriel Davis. A guy who had one of the best postseason performances by a wide receiver that we have seen in a very, very long time. In a limited role, we know Davis had a limited role in the offense. But in a limited role, he had 10 receptions. Now, this is in the postseason. 10 receptions, 242 yards receiving, and five touchdowns in what I believe will go down as one of the best postseason games in the National Football League versus our new arch nemesis, Kansas City Chiefs, and that performance by Gabe Davis put him on many people's radars. And lastly, 
You know we got to say the best for last. But lastly, we have Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Once again for the second straight season, finished with another MVP caliber season that earned him a Pro Bowl invite that he did not go to. I love the pettiness of Josh Allen. He's like, I ain't going to that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to try to invite me after the fact as an alternate. No, I don't want it. I'm going golfing. You know what I'm saying? Loved it. But needless to say, he still earned a Pro Bowl invitation. But he too, along with Gabe Davis, had the best postseason performance of his career. Do I need to rehash it? Yes, I'm going to rehash it. In just two postseason games last year, he went 48 for 62, or 637 yards passing, 77.4% completion percentage for those who say that Josh Allen can't complete a ball, for those who say that Josh Allen has accuracy issues. Are you kidding me? Now, on top of that, he had a whopping eight, no, not eight, nine touchdowns, nine touchdowns, only two sacks, and a QBR of one 49. Josh Allen went nuclear in the postseason last year. Nuclear. Now, when we think about the performances of these players, we expected Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde to have very good seasons, right? Because they've been, they've been doing this ever since they came to Buffalo. They've been balling. They've been showing out. It's just time that it's just finally time that the, the for the national a spotlight, the national media to catch up with what they've been doing for years. It's about time they got their just due. All pro safeties. But we were just waiting on their due, on their just due. Right? But we're glad that they got first and second team all pro nons and made up for it. And made up for the Pro Bowl snub that they got. Right, that happened. But I don't think anybody, anybody expected Dawson Knox to break out like he did last year. You can say you expected it if you want to, but I'm going to call you out. I'm saying you're lying. There's no way you expected Dawson Knox, Dawson Knox to have the breakout season that he did last year. And the same could be for Dave Davis, for Dave Davis, Gabe Davis. Although, in his rookie year, he did show some flashes of potential, right? But, you know, that to me, when I think about all of that, that, that to me is what makes every season so heavily anticipated. It's not just the expectations of the team making uh, uh, this year the year that they go to the Super Bowl. But for me, it's, 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 it's the excitement in the air. It's the suspense about, about who got next. Who got next? What player or players will have a breakout season and or breakout postseason this year? This year. And that's what we're going to talk about today, babies. We're going to talk about who got next. What players on this team will have a breakout season and or breakout postseason? Bills Mafia, let me tell you something. The Bills are a phenomenal football team. They are a phenomenal football team. Get used to it. They are exceptional. And when you have an exceptional football team full of exceptional players, you get exceptional plays, exceptional performances. That's why I love this season. That's why I love the year because we get to see that. We get to witness these players put on their best performances. Great players make great plays in big-time moments. We saw that last year. Now, who's going to be the one who's going to do it this year? Who got next, baby? Man, I'm getting fired up. <laughs> I'm fired up on this Monday. I am fired up. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Who got next? Who is going to be the next breakout player for the Buffalo Bills this coming season? Let's go to the defensive side of the ball. OK, and specifically the defensive line, we're going to go through, um, you know, every position, but we're going to let's look at the D line. 
All right, and, and, and let's look at the additions that were made to this team and see if we can find anybody that could potentially have a breakout year. And Mafia, I want, I want you to get in on this also, all right? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat who you think will have a breakout season or a breakout performance or breakout postseason this coming year. All right, so on the D-line, additions were made to the defensive line, okay? We had guys like Tim Settle, Daquan Jones, Vaughn Miller, Jordan Phillips, and Shaq Lawson were additions. But in addition to them, we have guys like Greg Rousseau coming back. We've got guys like Boogie Basham, A.J. Epinesa. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Ed Oliver. Man, we've got some guys on this defensive line. So who do you think on the defensive line could have a breakout season? For me, uh, yeah, I, it's it. I cannot uh, keep this guy off off the list. To me, it's Von Miller. It it, it it's Von Miller. I, I just feel it in my bones that Von Miller is gonna have a breakout season this year with the Buffalo Bills. Let's take a look at what I mean by that. We go to last year. Von Miller ended the season. With nine and a half sacks. Nine and a half sacks last year. He had four and a half with Denver, right? Before he got traded to the Rams. And then he had five with the Rams. So, so all in all, he had nine and a half sacks last year. Okay? Now, why do I think that he's going to have a breakout season? Well, let's look at the sack leaders, okay? Let's look at the sack leaders. Last year, we know who led the league in sacks, right? In case you don't know, it's T.J. Watt. He had 22 and a half sacks. Ridiculous year. Ridiculous year, okay? But let's look at uh, like the top 10. So we had T.J. Watt with 22 and a half. Robert Quinn with 18 and a half. Miles Garrett with 16, that's three. Nick Bosa at four with 15 and a half. Trey Hendrickson with 14. Okay? That's the top five. And then you've got Micah Parsons from Dallas. He had 13. Then you got a log jam at seventh place with, with Cam Jordan, Aaron Donald, and Matthew Judon, who all finished with 12 and a half sacks. All right? And then you had Harold Landry with 12. Okay? So that, that, that tops off the top 10 sack leaders from last year okay last year top 10 but i think that last year was an aberration okay because when you look at tj Watt, you say man 22 and a half sacks can i see a guy like him or anybody else reaching anywhere near that total again i don't see it happening i don't see it happening so let's go back another year to 2020 and see if we can get ourselves uh um more of balance okay let's, let's let's see let's see all right so let's, let's look at 2020 season okay and i'm pulling up the 2020 regular season uh defensive sack totals and rankings all right so so in 2020 again tj watt led the league in sacks with 15 this year this this time you see you see the difference so in 2022 he just exploded and had 22 and a half sacks. I mean, not 22, 2021, last year. 22.5 sacks last year. But the year prior, he led the league with 15. Okay? So he just exploded last year. I don't see that happening again. So in 2020, he led the league with 15. In second place was Aaron Donald with 13 and a half. And then again, tied with him was Trey Hendrickson with 13 and a half. And then he had Hassan Reddick at fourth with 12 and a half, along with Zadarius Smith with 12 and a half. And then he had Miles Garrett with 12. Leonard Williams from the Giants with 11 and a half. Stephon Tewitt had 11. Leonard Floyd had 10 and a half. And then Romeo Okwara from the, from, from the Lions, 10th place with 10 sacks. All right? I think that's more like it. I think that's more like it. But now let's look at Von Miller, okay? Let's look at Von Miller and find out where he fits, where he can be slotted in there, okay? 
Again, last year, Von Miller had nine and a half sacks. He was put on IR in 2020, but in 19, he had eight sacks, and then in 18, he had 14 and a half sacks. Okay? Now, this is what I think can happen for Von Miller. Here is my breakout take and why I think Von Miller will have a breakout season. I think Von Miller, this year, on your Buffalo Bills, will finish top 10 in sacks. Yeah. I really believe that Von Miller is going to finish top 10 in sacks. I don't, have a, I don't have a sack total, but I think that he will finish in the top 10. You look at, again, look at last year. Right? Last year, who had, let's, 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 let's find the 10th place, right? Harold Landry with 12. Okay? He was 10th in the league in sacks with 12. And then in 2020, we had Romeo Okwar with 10. So you mean to tell me that Von Miller, last year with nine and a half sacks between two teams, can't get anywhere between 10 to 12 sacks, I think it's very possible for Von Miller to end the year somewhere in that range. But regardless of what what, what his total ends up with, I think he's going to have a breakout year and, 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 and finish the year in the top 10. Top 10 in sacks. Breakout take by yours truly, Rated Rev. Now, let's move on. The linebacker position. We're talking about our starters here, right? Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds. Do I think that either one of those guys will have a breakout performance? I don't think it's going to be Matt Milano. But let's take a look at Tremaine Edmonds, okay? And compare him with the other linebackers. Um, or the top 10 linebackers in the NFL. Now, last year, looking at the defensive stats from last year, um, you know, linebackers, the big stat for them is, is tackles, right? It's, it's all about tackles and total tackles, all right? Number one on that list was uh, um, Olukon, right? I think that's how you, how you pronounce his last name from the, from the Falcons. He had 192 total tackles. That is, that, that is just absurd. That's absurd. Okay, Jordan Brooks and Bobby Wagner, both from the Seahawks, they had 184 and 170, who Bobby Wagner, by by the way, is on the Rams, who we're going to have to face to kick off the season. Then you had C.J. Mosley with 168 total tackles, Roquan Smith in fifth with 163, Denzel Perryman, 154, Devondre Campbell, 146, and then we go to the 10th place. We had Cole Holcomb from the Washington Commanders with 142. Where did Tremaine Edmonds fall on that list last year? Certainly wasn't top 10. Top 15? Nope. Top 20? Nope. Tremaine Edmonds all the way down. All the way down. Around 30th. Or lower, or lower, he had 108 total tackles last year. 108 total tackles. 70 solo tackles compared to guys like Olu Kwon, who had 102 solo tackles, Jordan Brooks, 109 solo tackles. Like, like Tremaine Edmond's total tackles were the same amount as these guys' solos. So do I think Edmonds is going to have a breakout season? I mean, what does a breakout season for a linebacker like Tremaine Edmonds look like? To me, it, I mean, top 10, right, in that range. Top 15. Can I get a top 15 performance in tackles by Tremaine Edmonds? It's going to require him to, to break the 130 tackle mark. Can he do it? I don't know. But do I think that Tremaine Edmonds is going to have a breakout season next year? When you look at the additions that we made to the defensive line, it's possible that he could be better 
But a breakout season, if you define it by, let's just say, top 10, top 15 in total tackles, I, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. He may perform better, but I don't think he makes that type of a leap next year to have a breakout season. I'm sorry. You know, come at me all you want. Cancel me, all that kind of stuff. It's all good, but I don't see Tremaine Edmonds having a breakout season for the Buffalo Bills next year. I don't see it. All right, so now let's keep it moving. Let's take a look in the secondary. Okay, at cornerback, we've got Tredavious White. We've got Teron Johnson. And then we have the rookie, Kair Elam. Now, I love Trey, but because of his injury, and, 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 the, and the time frame and when he's going to potentially be back from that injury, I don't think he's going to have a breakout year. Unless he just balls out, you know, right late in the season. I just don't see it happening. Okay, but there is a guy who I think can have a breakout performance. And that is the rookie. I'm going to go with the rookie, man. I'm going to go with the rookie, Kyrie Elam. I think that Kyrie Elam can have a breakout year. As a rookie on this Buffalo Bills team, for one, he's going to start, okay? We can assume that Trey is not going to be back by the start of the season, so that means that Kyrie Elam is going to start alongside Dane Jackson. So I think that Kyrie Elam is going to get a lot of attention. He's going to get a lot of attention, which means he's going to get a lot of opportunities, all right? A lot of opportunities. But when we talk about breakout performances by cornerbacks, you know, the, really the only stat that we really look at to, to, to determine whether or not they're going to have a breakout year are interceptions, right? I mean, that's the main, that's, that's the main stat for, for DBs is interceptions. So let's look at some of the INT leaders from last year, okay? Let's go through the top. Let me see. Where do I want to, where do I want to stop? We can go top 10. Let's go top 10, all right? We know last year... The league leader in interceptions was Trayvon Diggs, little brother to Stephon Diggs. He ended the year with 11 interceptions. That was crazy. He had a crazy year. 11 interceptions by Trayvon Diggs. Second place on that list was J.C. Jackson, former New England Patriot, now current Los Angeles Charger. He had eight, followed by, uh, and I cannot pronounce this, this man's name, Okay, Amani or Quarry from the from the Lions. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but he 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 had six. But now let's look who got tied for fourth. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, your all pro safeties, actually tied for fourth place in the NFL in interceptions, both having five. And then you had Kevin Byard and Quandre Diggs, Justin Simmons, Xavier Howard, Rasul Douglas, and Xavier McKinney as well. They all had five, okay? That rounds off the top ten, okay? Do I think Kair Elam has the ability or the potential to be somewhere in that top ten? Like, what do I think a breakout performance would be for a cornerback, a rookie cornerback like Kair Elam? I don't think he's going to have 11 interceptions like Trayvon Diggs. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, because even if you go back to 2020, let's look at 2020, 2020 season. Xavier Howard led the league in interceptions with 11. Okay, J.C. Jackson had nine. All right. So, I mean, he's going to have to get up there if he wants to get up with the top dogs. But just as far as a breakout rookie performance. Here's what here's my take. I think that Kyrie Elam. You mark it down. I ain't scared. You mark it down. I think Kyer Elam is going to have a breakout performance in his rookie year. Kyer Elam will have seven interceptions. Seven interceptions this year as a rookie. And seven interceptions would have been good for third amongst cornerbacks last year. I'm going out on a limb here. I think Kyrie Elam is a phenomenal prospect. I think he's a phenomenal cornerback. He's got ball skills. He's got the height and the length. In this system, he has the ability, right? He has the ability, and he'll have the opportunity to get some picks. And especially with the defensive line in front of him, I think it's going to be 
tip drill season, right? I think balls are going to be tipped in the air. The quarterbacks are going to be rushing. They're going to be throwing the ball up in the air like that. I, th- I, think, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for guys in the, in, in, in the secondary to have interceptions, namely Kyrie Lim. I think he's going to do it, okay? Now, do I think anybody else can have a breakout performance on the defensive side of the ball, um, especially in the secondary? No, I don't think so, Okay. Um, Jordan Poyer, no, I don't think so. I mean, a lot of it depends on, on whether or not he's going to come back on the field. Will Jordan Poyer even be a Buffalo Bill? Will he play next year? Well, you know, he, you know he, he's, he's posturing for a new deal. So that is still to be determined. And by the way, Brandon Bean, if you happen to be watching Rated Rev, please do what you got to do to bring the all-pro safety back. Okay? Make that happen, Bean. All right? And Bean, we trust. Okay, now another guy who who could potentially have a breakout year, and I didn't put him on my list, but as I think about him right now, with I'll put it with an asterisk. Look out for for Ed Oliver. Look out for Ed Oliver. This could be a year where he breaks out. He's had flashes. We saw the way he played last year. Played really well. Okay, prompting Brandon Bean. To, to sign that fifth-year option, right? This is going to be the year. Contract year for Ed Oliver. Is he, he's he's going to be motivated more than ever to make that money. So for that reason alone, okay, not to mention the additions on the defensive line with Vaughn Miller and you got a guy like Daquan Jones or Tim Settle next to him, I think that, I think that Ed Oliver, man, has the potential to have a breakout year. A breakout season. What does that look like? Right? Let, 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 me, let me just look at this. What does that look like for, for Ed Oliver, for a defensive tackle? Ed Oliver, what does he have to do? Okay? What does he have to do to have a breakout year? Um, he's got he's to up those sack numbers, right? He's got, he has to. His rookie year, he had five sacks, right? In 2020, he had three. And then last year, he had four. Man, if Ed Oliver can, can get like seven sacks on the year, Man, would that be considered a breakout season for Ed Oliver if he can get seven? Yeah, I think so, right? I think so. Ed Oliver with seven sacks, is it possible for one? Is it possible for him? I think so, man. I, th- I think so. Man, I-, I just have high hopes and high expectations, and I think that this, that this team and-, and this defense is going to ball out. It's going to ball out, especially this defensive line, man. The defensive line is going to be legit, legit. So, Put Ed Oliver on the list as a breakout candidate, all right? Now, let's move on to the offensive side of the ball, okay? Offensive side of the ball. Who on the offensive side of the ball do I think will have a breakout season? Number one, number one, it's Motor. Motor Singletary. You say, Rev, are you serious? You mean to tell me you think that Motor's going to have a breakout year? After all of the talk you would do, you, you were you were spewing out of your mouth about about getting Brees Hall and, and wanting a number one running back, you think that 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 Motor Singletary is gonna have a breakout year? Yes, I think he's gonna have one. I absolutely do. Yes, I do. For one, he's in the contract year. Okay? He's in the contract season. Okay, he's in the contract season. But don't sleep on motor. Okay? Let's look at some of his stats since entering into the league. Rookie year, rookie year, we see, we've seen flashes of motor ever since he became a Buffalo Bill. 775 rushing yards his rookie season. Mind you, he was, he was sharing carries with Frank Gore. And if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, he didn't even play for like the first four games, I think, right? I could be wrong. You guys correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. But 775 yards as a rookie is not bad. Averaging five yards a carry. Then he had a little bit of a regression in 2020, right? With 687 yards, rushing 4.4 yards per carry. Two touchdowns last year and his rookie year. I mean, in 2020 and his rookie year, okay? A lot of people were like, yo, you know, we got got to find somebody else, okay? And he's also, you know, kind of sharing the load a little bit with, with Zach Moss. But then last year... And this is where I think, you know, maybe some of us, um, 
didn't really realize what happened last year because of because of the offensive line issues we had throughout the majority of the year, okay, until Ryan Bates entered, in, entered the offensive lineup, the offensive line, starting lineup, and the offensive line started to gel, and Brian Dable started running the ball more. We started to see Motor start to put on some some pretty good performances and put up his numbers. But last year, Motor Singletary had a quiet, very quiet career year last year. He had 870 rushing yards last year. But now get this, on 188 rushing attempts, you say, what does that have anything to do with it? When you look at the 2020 and his rookie year, he had... 150, okay, give or take, 151 to be exact, his rookie year, 156 in 2020. But then he jumps all the way up last year with 188 carries, 188 attempts for 870 yards, 4.6 yards per carry, seven, seven touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, mind you. Quiet year, right? Quiet year. Like nobody would have would have guessed that Motor had almost a thousand yards rushing last year. But, but like many of us have said before, you've got to give these backs carries. You have to give them carries in order for them to get their groove, right? To feel themselves, right? To to get a, a feel for how the defense is playing them, to get a feel for how the offensive line is blocking. You've got to give these guys carries to get in the game, right? To get their, their, their juices flowing. You can't just give a guy five carries, seven carries, ten carries a game and be done and, and, and get him off, you know, after every couple of carries and switch him out with him and expect him to have like, like some type of phenomenal performance. You need the best guy on the field and give him the rock, man. Give him the rock. And we see that happen. We saw that happening last year. He had almost 30 more carries, attempts last year than he did the previous year. And he put up almost 1,000 yards rushing. Now, granted, you say, Rev, but did you forget that we got James Cook in the second round? No, I didn't forget that. Of course not. Of course not. But he's a rookie, Okay. Now, I believe that, that, that James Cook is going to have his opportunities, right? He's going to have his opportunities. How many is to be determined. But I think he's going to have his opportunities. But I think the bulk of the carries will be by motor. He will get the bulk of them, okay? Cook will have his, he'll have his fair share, right? But I think that, that Ken Dorsey, if he's smart, which I know he is, will look at what happened with motor last year especially around the tail end of the season and how he started coming on, the more Brian Dable fed him the rock. And I think he's going to take a page out of that book and not wait the major- until the majority of the season is over to start doing it. I think he's going to do it immediately, immediately, right? Plus, I mean, you think about we got Roger Saffold now on the offensive line, right? We got Aaron Cromer coaching the O-line. He, we know what he's about, right? And so I think that it is not out of the realm of possibility to think that Motor could have a breakout year. You give him the rock early in the season, you give him his, his touches, right? I mean, look, he can continue where he left off. So what does a breakout performance for Motor Singletary look like? I said it. A while back, on one of my, on one of my uh, uh, rapid fire, on my mama takes, I said, on my mama, the Buffalo Bills will have a 1,000-yard rusher on the team this year. And I am not jumping off of that. So I believe that this year, in a contract season, mind you, Motor Singletary will finish with 1,000 rushing yards. 1,000 rushing yards for the season. First time in his career, but we see that he is steadily progressing and getting better and better. 1,000 rushing yards. That's only 
only, what, 130 more yards rushing than he had last year. You don't think that he can do that? If they start giving him the rock more this year, especially early in the season, and we've got the offensive line gelling now, we've got Roger Saffold, and then we got Ryan Bates back to go along with Mitch Morris, Deion Dawkins, Spencer Brown, I think it's very possible to see Motor Singletary with 1,000 yards, at least 1,000 yards rushing this year, plus 10 touchdowns. I'm saying 10. I'm saying 10. Last year, he had seven rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. He had eight total. Am I saying he's going to have 10 total touchdowns or 10 rushing touchdowns? Man, I think Motor's going to explode this year, guys. I think I, I'm going to say Motor's going to have 10 rushing touchdowns. 10 of them. Count it. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, 10 rushing touchdowns from a man, Motor Singletary. And a contract season. He's trying to make that, that bank, baby. Motor wants the bag. Motor wants the bag. All right. Next up on the list. For a breakout performance, a breakout season. On the offensive side of the ball. It is my man, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis. I am so feeling this right now. Yo, I think Gabe is going to explode. I really do. I think he's going to explode. I know we've got Diggs. I love Diggs. Diggs is going to have a great year too. I know we've got uh, Isaiah McKenzie. Love McKenzie. I know we've got Jamison Crowder, who I think is going to be very good this year. But Gabe Davis is my man. He is my man. Let's look at some, some, some stats from Gabe Davis, all right? We know the type of performance he put on in the playoffs last year. We already talked about it. But let's look at some stats. Season stats. Last year, Gabe finished the season with 35 receptions, 549, might as well say 550 yards uh, uh, receiving, six receiving touchdowns. And watch this. He averaged 15.7 yards per reception. Then his rookie year in 2020, 35 receptions again. That seems to be his, his, you know, that, that, that's, that's, that's his thing. 35 receptions again, but he had 599, let's just say 600 yards receiving, seven touchdowns, 17 yards per reception. Yo, Gabe Van, Gabe's going to break out. He's going to break out this year. You say, Rev, he did that, you know, because he wasn't the number two. I mean, we had Diggs and then we had uh, uh, Beasley and Gay was getting leftovers from defensive, from the defensive uh, uh, secondary cornerbacks. He's getting leftovers. Rev, what makes you think that he's gonna perform better and be the number two? Because he's steadily progressed. He's steadily gotten better. I trust the process. This guy is, is he, man. Look, the sky's the limit for Gabe. The sky is the limit for Gabe. And I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but he put out a video on Instagram. Few weeks back, dude is looking yoked up. He looks bigger. He's gotten bigger. He's already what six two two ten. I think he's probably two fifteen, maybe close to two twenty. Dude is big. He looks big, man. Um, I love Gabe. I think he's gonna have a breakout year. I think he's gonna have a breakout year. You say, man, but yo, is can he handle the pressure of being the number two receiver on this team? Yes. Yes, I think so. I believe it. I believe it. Don't sleep on Gabe, man. Don't, don't sleep on Gabe. Sideline king, yeah, but he can do so much more than that. And then we look at, this is a stat that I, I, just, I just love looking at, man. Gabe, last year averaged over 15.7 15 yards per reception. Then his rookie year, he had 17. For people thinking that, yo, we need a, a, a deep threat guy. We need a guy to, to, to break the top off. Gabe, 15.7 yards per reception. 17 yards per reception. His rookie year. Man, and then we saw what happened in the playoffs. Gabe can take the top off. He's not a burner. He's not a 4-3 guy, 4-4 four, four guy. But he has, his, his play speed is different. He has enough play speed to get behind defenses and make them pay deep. 
He's got great hands, right? Jump ball guy out of the out of you know jump out of the roof. Man, I love Gabe. So what will a breakout year look like for Gabe Davis? I think that Gabe can have 800 yards receiving. That's not bad for a number two. Give him 800 yards and nine touchdowns. Nine touchdowns. I don't know how many receptions he's going to get, but I think that he's. I think he's going to get targeted more than he did last year. 800 yards. Nine total touchdowns for Gabe Davis. I think that would qualify for a breakout season for the number two receiver, Gabe Davis. And then last but not least, last but not least, you guys know I could not go this show talking about breakout performances and breakout seasons without talking about the Josh Allen. He's going to have another breakout year. Another one. Look. I don't necessarily need to go over the stats that Josh had. We know he's been phenomenal, right? But but if Josh Allen maintains his passing yard total, right, from the last couple of years, let's look at it. Last year, he had over 4,400 yards passing. In 2020, his breakout year, right, his, his, his hello year, AFC Championship King year, MVP caliber year he had 4500 passing yards if he can maintain that yo i think sky's the limit because let's just take a look at 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 aaron Rodgers, okay because aaron Rodgers has won the mvp last couple of years aaron Rodgers last year in his mvp season had 4,100 passing yards. That's it. 4,100 passing yards. Josh beat him in the passing yard total by about 300 yards. Rodgers, 4,100. Josh, 4,400. Rodgers, 37 passing touchdowns. Josh, 36 passing touchdowns. Let's look at 2020 when Josh had that MVP caliber season. It just so happened that Aaron Rodgers had a better year. Aaron Rodgers in 2020, 4,299 passing yards, or let's just say 4,300 passing yards. Josh Allen, 4,500 passing yards. He said, man, well, how in the world did Josh not get it? Aaron Rodgers, 48 passing touchdowns to Josh's 37. But here is where um, I think it hurts Josh. It's in his touchdown and interception ratio, okay? Aaron Rodgers last year, 37 touchdowns of four interceptions. In 2020, 48 passing touchdowns to only five interceptions. Then you look at Josh last year, 36 passing touchdowns to 15 interceptions, okay? In 2020, he had 37 touchdowns of 10 interceptions. This is where I think, you know, it, it, it hurts Josh. When you talk about MVP, I still think he's going to have an MVP caliber season. But if I'm talking about breakout performance, okay, I think he needs to have the, he needs to, he needs to win the MVP. Okay. Now, if he maintains his passing yard total, which for the last couple of years, he's beaten Aaron Rodgers, the top dog MVP, which Josh Allen's passing yard total is, is 4,400 yards. That dude be airing the ball out, man. 4,400 yards. And if he can break, 40 touchdowns, 40 touchdowns, and then get his interceptions under 10, under 10. If he can get him under 10, if he can eclipse 40 touchdowns and still maintain that 4,400-yard passing uh, uh, total, I think that he's going to win the MVP. I think he'll win the MVP. I think so. I don't think it's going to be Aaron Rodgers again. He lost his main, he lost his main guy in Devontae Adams. You know, I think it's very possible for Josh Allen to do that, to have an MVP caliber year, which will make it a breakout season for Josh Allen. Man, how do you guys feel about that, Mafia? Let me know how you feel in the chat right now. Can you see Josh Allen with, the, with another breakout performance, another breakout season? 
Like, can you see him having a breakout performance in the postseason? Yes, I can. But I want to know what you think about it. So we've got recap. Josh Allen on offense. Gabe Davis on offense. Motor Singletary. On the defensive side, we've got Kyir Elam, the rookie. And then we've got Vaughn Miller along with an asterisk beside Ed Oliver. Those are the guys I think will have breakout seasons for the Buffalo Bills this coming year. Let me know whether or not you agree with my take, whether or not you hate it, think Drevy, that's just trash, that's not going to happen. It's all good. It's all love. Let me know even your takes, who you think will have a breakout season next year or this year for the Buffalo Bills. But you all, look, that concludes my time. Thank you so very much for joining me for another edition of Rated Rev brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. Stay tuned to next week, guys. Stay tuned to next week because we just might do a special Memorial Day podcast. Special Memorial Day podcast could be coming soon next week. But until then, guys, have a blessed, blessed rest of your day. Bless rest of your week. See you again next week. Same time, same channel. You know how we do it, baby. Mondays, 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time. God bless you guys. Grace and peace. And as always, go big. <laughs>